What up, my boy? What time you want us to come through? Whenever you want. I said like two or three, because right now we're cleaning the house. I just finished here and cleaning the grill. It's all for you, dog. Not for us. It's all for Maddie. It's not for Sponto. But who's Maddie? Is that your girlfriend or who's <laughs> Today, Venice is the most expensive area of LA, pricier than Santa Monica, Bel Air, or even Beverly Hills. It's turning into a neighborhood of rich tourists cruising on Segways and high-end restaurants on Abbott Kinney. But it wasn't always this way. Back in its heyday, Venice was hard. You buy your drugs at Murder Park, not some boutique dispensary. And the food was good and simple. Lots of family-owned restaurants that were supported by the local community. Most of the dudes from back then are long gone. But Sponto and Two-Tone are a couple of Venice natives who have dug in and are fighting to preserve what's left of their old hometown soul. In 2012, they founded Born and Raised, a street clothing label inspired by the old Venice, the Venice of skaters, bangers, hardcore bikers, who made this hood the mecca of SoCal beach culture in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. And they're not the only ones still here. Despite the changes, a handful of old school food joints have refused to leave the new Venice, surviving what Sponto calls genocide by gentrification. With these dudes as my guides, I'm gonna reveal what's left of this iconic beach community, find out what it takes to stand strong against the shifting sands of change. Bunch of big, bad, dirty dogs. We got like all the like, you know, like the remnants of our neighborhood, like, you know, Venice Pavilion. How'd you get that? You just took it? This is a dude named Eric White. When they tore it down in like 98, 99 or something, yeah. he just rolled up and was like, yo, I, just, I need that. So yeah. I took it off his hands. This is all like our story, like our memories. You know what I mean? Like Chiquito and Bouncer and Oakwood and the Pavilion and like that dope sign. Like I took that dope sign from Oakwood Park where, you know, it used to be like an open air drug. No park. dope. Buyers and dealers, beware. We used to hustle a lot of dope. Now we just hustle clothing. It's different, right? It's the same. It's the same. Yeah, the markup is much better with clothing, though. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, your profit margin is cracking. <laughs> let's go check out Two Tone. See yeah? what this fool's got going on. I'll show you some stuff. OK, let's go. You want me to go first or second? You go first, All right, after go first. you. All right. Dude, your shit's getting tight, man. It's tight, bro. This is the shit I need. So where do you guys typically start with? The clothing part of the brand is almost like secondary to everything else. It was like, oh, f let's get in the store. Okay, cool. Okay, let's go here. Let's make a video. Let's make another video. Let's make a zine. Let's do this. Yeah. There's no business f plan. Like, it was yeah. literally a, a shoebox full of cash. And we're just like, okay, let's f print this here, run around there. It was f wild. You know, yeah. it, was, it was crazy. It was, it was straight up like, you know, I mean, it was me and him for a long time. When was the first time that you ever met Sponto? I saw one of his stickers at a trade show. It was the native head. It said, gentrification is genocide. Right. I'm looking at a wall with all these stickers all over it, and there was like one sticker that was like, oh shit, this guy actually right. a point to make, and like a point that I understood, because like, you know, I grew up in Venice, and I can't afford to live there anymore, and I don't yeah. know anyone there anymore, and I don't even like the neighborhood anymore. It's a f***ing rap. Well, I want to like take you and show you like the underbelly of- The real Venice. Like the real Venice, what's really The here. Venice you remember. The Venice that I grew up, yeah. Yeah. The place that I was born and raised in. This is Murder Park. This is Murder Park. This is Murder Park, yeah, man. Just... This is where I made all my money when I was a kid, man. Since 1980, the proportion of black residents in Venice has almost halved. And in 99, LA police adopted a gang injunction that locals believed accelerated that exodus by harassing black and Latino residents. But despite rising real estate costs, some of the original locals, like Sponto, refused to leave. His toughness and his heart, forged over his years as a member of Venice 13, are still front and center. 
This is his territory. It's in his blood. And it kills him to see the neighborhood changing before his eyes. See, when I think of Venice, I think of like that house. That's Venice. And now it's this souped up wealthy version of Burning Man. I mean, that's been there for quite some time. It's my homeboy Rebel's house. OK. So I just want to stop by, pop in, and say hello. Yeah. You know, he was kind of like, you know, I looked up to him a lot growing up, like right. my big homie. Big homie. What's cracking, old boy? <laughs> What's up with it? What it do, what it do right here. All the way live since the summer All at 95. West side, you know, you know how we do. <laughs> What's up, man? Right here, how's everything? That's one of these shits. My good friend, Maddie. What's up? Hey, Maddie. Nice to meet you. Yeah, in nice to meet you. Canada. What do you got in there? Carne asada, chicken, ribs, you know what I mean? Oh, you like it out here, though? The world's changing, and, it, and it's crazy to just see these little pockets that change at an exponential rate. The Venice that you grew up with. Oh, it was right. Like people so didn't like, want to live in Venice. Just put it yeah, that way before. Right. It was just like, like Mexican gang, black gang, you know, like, yeah. you hardly ever see no white people walking around in Oakwood at our park, you know what I mean? Right. Like, the whole landscape have changed, you know? Like, that thing literally started in Venice, you know what I mean? How it used to be, like I said, that's ghost town, you know, like, yeah. After like Why'd you call it ghost town? It was just the way it was. I mean, but yeah. you didn't want to walk after dark. Just put right. it that way. Hell no. Nah. It was run down and it was, you know, it was decaying, but it was beautiful because it was ours. You know what yeah. I mean? This is, our whole, this is our whole state of being. There's so much fear, and then there's on the other side, there's so much like romanticism about it. I'm very proud of being a gang member. Right, right. You know, like all I was doing was protecting my neighborhood and my people from the opposition. Like, you know, I just spent three years fighting cancer, and like I've been shot three times, and I. You know, I fought life in prison twice. Like, I've been through the ringer. Yeah. The way we grew up and our culture, which I think is absolutely gorgeous, and I wouldn't change it for anything for the world. Dude, we're stand-up dudes. We're good people. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of people get it up. Hey. 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 Dude, that's fire, dude. I know what's in that. Little molasses. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes down to my family and friends, like, I go, like, way out, you know? The extra miles, they say, you know? After hanging with his crew, Sponto took us to the home he grew up in for a soup and fry bread. Sharing fry bread in Native American culture is a sacred tradition that links the generations. I wanted to meet his mom because she's been in Venice forever, and she can remember what it was like before all the tourists and the McMansions. Yeah, we had um, my mom's house, really like my great grandma's house. Okay. We've been here for like, shit, close to like 90 years. Really? Yeah. On this one lot? Yeah, the same house, yeah. Yeah, they came out the reservation in, I think, 1928. Mama. Mama. Hi. What's going on? You know my friend Maddie? Hey, what's up? Maddie's my mother. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. This is two-tone? So sure. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Making some fry bread? Lots of fry bread. Lots of fry bread. So I think fry bread is one of those things that's passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. well, well, who'd you learn it from? My grandmother. Your grandmother? Yeah. OK. What was her name? Bessie. Bessie. She was White Mountain Apache. OK. And my grandfather was Seneca from Tonawanda. Yeah, up by Buffalo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I'm a natural. He's going to help us. Yeah? yeah. He's going to get his hands dirty? Yeah. OK. <laughs> come on, Spanto. Come and make some fry bread. Mom, is this ready to flip? No. No? I remember like uh, sitting here in the same kitchen and watching great grandma Make, you know, make us fry bread when we were little. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make a soup. Corn soup? Is that okay? Yeah, that sounds good. It'll go good with this. Cool. So I just got onions, celery, carrots. I got some poblano peppers and some jalapeno. And then we're going to put in some veggie stock. And then the butternut squash and the corn. Mm. Cook that. Oh. I don't want to f up mom's house. I think that this is the best kind of stuff. Like, every culture has a bread that was made from just, you know, like a pita. Uh, a bannock, a fry bread. Everyone has just like that white bread mm -hmm. that, that, that they survived on. Talking about soup warming up the soul and sickness and stuff, you know, like you in the last few years have had your world turned upside down. You know, being diagnosed with cancer and just, just like the chemotherapy was worse than the cancer alone. Like yeah. I couldn't gauge what was reality, what was real, what was, you know, like it's just, you're on like the hardest drug on the planet. I still had like a silver lining. I had like a, a light at the end of the tunnel, which was like, which was born and raised. I just wanted to get better so I could get back to work, you know? Yeah. I have my mother and like, I have this home and I have people that I gotta look out for. My only option is to stay alive. Like I'm not gonna let this cancer f me up and drive me into the ground like I refuse. You yeah. know, just like, just, uh-uh, no. Not gonna fail. Here's where you either go, okay, well, good luck with that. 
Yeah. Uh, let's let's just dead this whole thing, or we go. Well, let's f it. You know. Let's ride. And a couple years went by, and it's like, for him, it wasn't fast. For me, it was a f blur. There's this, a lot of fight or flight, man. This this fool stuck around and like dealt with my shit for three years. Like born and raised is just a clothing line. Like, born and raised is like our life story. It's like our life work. You know what I mean? Like it's like. All of our friends that are gone now, all of our friends that are dead, all of our friends doing life, like we do this shit for them. And like as corny as that may sound, like that's the truth, you know? That was three years ago and like now we're here eating fried bread with Two-Tone and Omar and my mother eating my great grandmother's recipe. Breaking bread. Break bread. I break fried bread. Venice has changed, you know? It doesn't seem like it's stopping. It must be like, uh... once again, another like those, those powerless moments in, in life. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I'd go down to the boardwalk. There was nobody down there. There weren't t-shirt shops. It was either homes or boarded up warehouses. And you know, you had your one or two et cetera winos that everybody looked out for. Yeah, just on this block, you know, with this big house next door and another big house going across the street to that way. It's just uh, not the neighborhood I grew up in yeah. at all. This is my second time being in Venice. I don't know what it used to be like. You know, my idea was, you know, that 70s surfer, you know, kind of cool thing that they make up in the movies that doesn't exist. I'd love to, you know, go around with you guys and, and check out Venice. You got some spots or what? Is there spots still that exist? There's a couple of uh, strongholds that are still holding it down. Yeah. You know, like places that we grew up with that are still here. Okay. Um, Maybe we'll go tomorrow and, and take you around and show you a couple of spots. That, uh, the boardwalk? Is the boardwalk cool I mean, or not all, cool? I mean, it, all roads lead to the boardwalk. Oh, at the end. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the whole city ends up spilling out on the boardwalk every summer. The whole yeah. f city. How often did you come down here, like, when you were a kid? I came down as much as I could. Yeah. You know, I mean, where else are we going to go? I mean, you hang out in, inside more, but then you're here, like, a good part of my day was always here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, imagine having, like, this <laughs> whole thing is, like, your backyard, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm going to step out, go to the pavilion, go drink a 40, go skate, you know, go serve breakwater, go pick up on girls, take some acid on the boardwalk. Like, it's the best day of your life. It's good. Every day is the best day of your life. I'm sick of walking around. You know, like, this is cool, you can only see so much. I'm hot. There seems to be this segue. I'd love to, I've never been on a segue, and I feel to really encompass the boardwalk in all of its glory and trashness, we get segues. You into that sort of thing? So what, this is the part where? On TV magic, and it's us smiling, having the best time of our lives, embracing the full. So in your in your guys in your crew's mind, this is where we cut, and all of a sudden we're like, "Sir, I'm not absolutely not doing it." Yeah, like, no, you can do it. I'm not gonna be a part of that. We're gonna do this, okay? No, no, no. Not like I think that would be really nice. I mean, do I go to Canada and ask you to ride a moose? Everything leads to the beaches. Everything, if you're in Venice, everything comes out. It's an amusement park. It's free. It's free. You know, and it's like, there's so many different walks of life here, and like so many, you know, there isn't like much to do, but it's a space. Just like mob out and just have a good time, right? Like I said, man, this is this is like our backyard. This is where we grew up. Like, you know, we don't have shit to do. Let's go to the beach. I just bumped into 40 people I grew up with. And then you give it time, you see the most wild shit. Yeah. Not locals, because you know who they are, but just, yeah. I mean, there's a dude out here playing basketball with a <laughs> gardening hat and day glow gloves. <laughs> so we almost saw a fist fight with some yeah. fools that never leave, man. They've been here forever and they're not going anywhere either. This is like, this is LA's beach, man. Like, yeah. this, this is where LA comes. Like, like yeah. now you look on Venice Boulevard, like you see the long line of traffic. This is where we end up, you know? What's different? This there, is, must be different. To be honest with you, like like this place, like the boardwalk, all of this, the handball courts, like all this stuff is pretty much like the only place in Venice that still looks the same. It's kind yeah. of remained untouched. You're right. I'm looking around. It's like nothing. It's like this is a f time capsule right here. Nothing's changed <laughs> right here. 
Another Venice institution to survive gentrification is the family-owned Great Western Steak and Hoagie Company. It's been a popular spot with locals for decades. Sponto and Two-Tone have been eating here since they were kids, and I wanted to know how it's managed to hold its own against the influx of fusion cafes and organic juice bars. What's good? I heard All this right, is man. a spot. Yes, yeah. it is, man. Been here since 71. Five and a half ounces, ribeye steak, chopped up, Boom. grilled onions, grilled bell peppers. So do you find that like having a spot like this, like do you ever get like scared at all? Like all these weird ass spots moving into town? That's the thing about it, you know, being here 40 years, you see things come and go. Yeah. So you're used to it, you know? Right. This whole thing is changing right now and it might be for the better for some people, it might be for the worse for others. Yeah. But a staple like this just sees everything that goes on and just stays quiet and keeps it. Just on the low lookout. key. Yeah. So why'd you you know like cheesesteaks usually like you know, like a Philly thing. There was no good Philly cheesesteak shop around here and when yeah. it started forty years ago, yeah, the it just took off. It was simple. You can never underestimate the simplicity of a cheesesteak. Yeah. You're getting five and a half ounces of ribeye steak chopped up with caramelized onions on a French roll. That's right. Oh hell yeah. Hey daddy, I said what's up. I right, he'll be back. He'll be right back. All right. Oh shit. Oh you put that inside you? Perfect day. It really was though. Yeah. And I mean that. No, it was amazing. Nah, Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Muzzle tough. <laughs> you know, this is the perfect way to end that. You know, we walk around the crazy boardwalk. We get to see a bunch of your buddies. Mob. The mob. Mobbing out, smashing out. Got friend, the Segway. The friend group, eh? The friend group, eh? Yeah. Back home, we just call them the friend group. Yeah, the friend group. We call them the friend group. Hey, bring your whole friend group, and they'll uh, fight with my friend group. One bite, one bite. Hey, this shit gonna go viral. Here we go. One bite, one bite. Let's get it in the hole. 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 This is the pioneer. My father, hey, Sergio Senior. This is the father here. Calm down. This is my dad. Nice to meet you. Garcia's Market is another family-owned Venice food joint that stood the test of time. Like Hoagie's, it's earned the loyalty of what remains of the original Venice community by serving simple, authentic food. Pozole is a traditional Mexican stew. It's not a dish you see everywhere, and I wanted to find out why it's so popular with Sponto and Two-Tone and other old-school locals. You guys only make the pozole, one pozole? On the weekends only, though. Only on the weekends? Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and take a, take a little five in the back, right. eat some food. Right. You want me back there? All right. Got that liquor store pozole. Come on, Mark. Musio! <laughs> sure is looking dusty. <laughs> Moose is my own boy, Maddie. All the way here from Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? This car's crazy. You got this color in Canada right here? This aqua turk? Yeah, I can't believe you didn't get no drips on your shirt. I'm a gangster, homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> You've been coming here since you were a kid? Man, I've been coming here since I've been like probably 12, 13 years old. I think Ms. Garcia gets up at 4 a.m. and makes this every weekend. Every Saturday, Sunday for the hangover. Omar's watching. Streets are over. Omar's always watching, I feel. Omar's like the one true truth in the world. Whose dog's that? That's me. That's Omar. Oh, yeah, bodyguard? Yeah, big time. Yeah, that's our security. So, Alec, you, you guys are making this something that's just like honest to like your family, you know? My dad started a few years ago and uh, just tried it for a sample for a weekend. Yeah. And then everybody asked for it and then he keeps doing it. And how long has he been making that? Uh, yeah, we've been here since the 70s, right. 76, Garcia's. There's a lot of changes. A lot of people come real estate trying to buy out our houses and our friends' houses and all yeah. that stuff. And you guys have like your stake here. Like this is like, I feel like Garcia's It's is, family owned, yeah. Yeah, like you guys aren't going anywhere. Yeah, we're, we're have no plans of going anywhere. After learning about how Garcia's has managed to survive in Venice, Sponto and Two-Tone reminded me they were throwing a massive community party that night. So, you know, why, why the f You guys thought that you guys should just have a formal party. How do we start Sadie Hawkins? We've done a bunch of different events and they're always cracking. So yeah. we're sitting around talking about what's the next thing we should do. Boom, Sadie Hawkins. Sadie Hawkins, if you didn't know, is where the girl asked the boy. So oh, now, okay. at this stage in the game, I was like, we gotta do some sort of, like we do, we do, we do streetwear, but something. Put some suits on. Yeah, no one gets married anymore. So like, let's, let's get decked out to the nines and throw a, a, throw a party. I mean, dude, I brought my suit. To fuel up for the long night ahead, we stopped by Two-Tone's favorite restaurant, Gilbert's. 
another local family-owned classic that's been serving up authentic Mexican food for almost 30 years. Everything I've had has been good. Everyone says, like any chef says it, like those are the spots that you, you search for. You, you want those places that have been in the neighborhood, family-owned, family-run, they're making one f thing. It doesn't, you can't beat it, that. it doesn't get any better than that. So this is what you guys do every year? You just come here and get charged up for the big Sadie Hawkins or what? Yeah. This is the spot. Yeah, it's like a tradition. You know, it's my first time going to Sadie. Yeah, Sadie Hawkins is that. I don't know, man. Sadie Hawkins is special. It's a real good feeling. It's, it's like it's like my Christmas Eve. Yeah. There's a party and they party, people feel good. Sponto and Two Tone built born and raised as an homage to the gritty old Venice that made them who they are. Like the family run restaurants that remain. They've survived by keeping it simple and staying true to their roots. Even though the neighborhood they love's been overrun by million dollar houses and high end restaurants, on nights like this, you can feel the heart of that old community. You come to Teddy Hawkins, nobody's salty, everybody's happy, everybody's dancing, everybody's sweaty, everybody's hugging. You know, it's like, it's, it's that kind of environment, you know? It's like a house party, but just hyped up on steroids. And the way that you guys represent it, I think, is a beautiful one. You know, you guys are holding on and, and, and you know, fighting for something that really is an, an inevitable death. First of all, I, I'm a complete tourist. And then I get welcomed in. And I get to just see how you guys live. We got to see these cool spots. Having that insider perspective on Venice, you guys have this like ownership of it. I don't care what ends up happening 20 years from now. I'll never change up. I'll never switch up. I've always kept it true, and I will always keep it true to what I was taught growing up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll never f budge. Tonight's the night. Well, now I'm gonna get yoked the f up. Tonight's Sadie tonight. Hawkins. Tonight's Sadie tonight. Hawkins. Sadie Hawkins, to year number three, Baby. to Gilbert's, to the West Side, to Venice, to Oakwood, to all of it, to Canada. Hey. Hey. Thanks, God Maddie. bless Venice. Nah, I appreciate it, man.